So what we are doing today is we are going to make an alternate way to um, lock out your trailer brakes uh, for when you're trying to back up. The way the design is supposed to work is a lot of the newer ones have five pins instead of four. The, the fifth pin comes off your backup lights and that energizes the solenoid to release your trailer brakes so that you can back up because as you back up you know your tongue comes in and activates your brakes. We, we've had um, a plug fail, we've had um, the wiring fail in the trailer, we've had where the truck was broke down and we had to have the trailer towed home by a tow truck that they had a hitch but they didn't have a connector to, to plug this in. So he towed it 60 miles home got in front of the house, couldn't back it in the trailer, in, into the driveway. Um, so these get corroded often. And, and what I do is I use the, um, the dielectric uh, silicon grease. It keeps them from getting moisture building up on them. And it does conduct electricity uh, just fine. It's what most mechanics use on marine um, wiring and it seems to be uh, the industry standard to use. So you always want to make sure it's plugged in tight so the water doesn't get in there and it is cinched in there good for normal operation. Um, so this one is made by Dexter. Uh, we bought this trailer through a, a boat dealer and not directly from a trailer uh, manufacturer or trailer shop. What seems to be common practice here in Florida is they'll sell you this, the, uh, the smallest, lightest duty trailer with no features on it um, so they can make the most amount of money and they get you out the door and you're on your own. Uh, a lot of the better receivers here, they have a place where you can put a pin through here and that keeps the, when the tongue can't come back and lock out the brakes. Or sometimes you see like a little round piece that goes in a round hole and that serves the same purpose. You'll see there's no no place to put that on here. This pin is to keep this latch down to keep the ball from popping up. It has nothing to do with the backup brakes. And in fact, you want to make sure that's in when you're backing up because if the brakes do lock up, what happens is they want to come up. And if this hatch is open, it could easily pop the trailer off your ball. So you want to make sure this stays in anytime you're, you're hooked up to the truck. Um, throughout the rest of the video, I'll walk you through how I made my alternate lockout device, and it seems to work pretty good. Um, I also carry a separate plug in the truck just in case, but you never know, you could have truck wiring going bad, you could have trailer wiring going bad. It could be something besides the plug. Uh, there could be as simple as in the parking lot while you're out on your boat having a fun day, somebody steals your plug. You just don't know, but it's, we've had several times now where we've had to use a different way of blocking this out. And I decided that I'm going to make something simple, compact, I can keep in the truck. And um, you know the saying, if you have it, you'll never need it. So I hope that's the case. Okay, so here we are in the shop. Um, what we're going to use is a dielectric silicon um, compound grease. Why dielectric? Um, I don't know. I was always taught that meant it did not conduct electricity, but this is what almost everybody in the marine industry uses. Um, maybe not this brand, but um, it does a great job of keeping your any contacts dry. It, um, it stays on there so they don't corrode and Obviously, your your connectivity is not an issue with it. Um, otherwise, millions of boaters and professionals would not be using it. So all it's going to take is a little dab into each of the the holes. Make sure I get some in there because I was looking at the camera. So there, there's a bunch in there, and this will transfer onto the plug coming from the trailer so I don't need to put it on the trailer side too. Then I, I flip it over and I'm going to do the side that plugs into the truck and it only uses um, 
seven of the pins and the middle one is actually a pin too so if you count them on the outside one two three four you need five to make the five the five way plug work and so a little bit on there and this will transfer to the truck plug this in this is something you should do um, you know periodically however often you uh, do your maintenance I would I would check this because you know you're going to disconnect it maybe when it's in storage and so one one side or the other will be exposed to the weather and that grease could maybe come off and with time um, if you leave it plugged into the truck you could drive cross country and back would never have to change it or check it but like I said for storage it is something you should make a visual inspection before you plug it in make sure that you're not having a corrosion problem um, and address it from there okay so I'm going to go plug this back in and then we're going to start making our uh, lockout plate so here we are back at the truck as I said I just I got these lubricated plug in tightly you want to make sure there's no or little gap in there that moisture would get in there even though we greased it um, the grease will keep keep it from corroding as long as the grease is there but the water can eventually wash off the grease so you might want to make sure that's tight and same thing with this plug we'll put it back in and there I am ready to tow since this has happened to me twice and I do carry a spare plug now for my truck in case something happens to this plug but I could be in a situation where we need to have the trailer towed and um, by a, a different vehicle and it doesn't have a way to connect it to the backup um, feature so what we're going to do is we're going to make a plate that goes from the main frame to pass this hole here and but not up to this pin this pin only holds down this latch that keeps the trailer from popping up um, on some of the better versions of trailers there's another pin that goes that goes in to keep the tongue from coming in in the case of emergency like what we're, we're talking about today but like I said um, boat dealers will sell you the cheapest uh, under undersized trailer piece of crap that they can um, to get you out the door and take your money so you're kind of stuck on your own trying to figure these things out so what we're going to do is we're going to measure so I want to go past past this this hole here but I don't want to block this cable too much in case we do want to unconnect the uh, the trailer so it looks like four inches is a good number and so we're going to go cut two pieces of um, good sized uh, lumber to fit here that's not too soft. Yeah, so what we have here is basically a, a piece of 1x6 which you know is no longer 6 inches and so it's really um, five and a half by a little more than 3 quarters so uh, this should work fine um, my first version of the, the project I just had two pieces of scrap that who knows where they came from so we're going to mark this off real quick first safety glasses um, here in Florida I use the tinted ones because sometimes the Sun is just as bad you squint your eyes or look away and things can happen um, I'll cut from this side since I'm right-handed and a good rule is never have a power tool laying on the ground plugged in if you're not ready to use it so um, I wait until I'm ready Plug it in, the little lights on me and I got power. My depth is set for a good thickness for this board. Two cuts and here we go.
Here is that saw down and once again unplug it since it's not going to be in use. Um, kind of kind of like a gun, he always assumes loaded. You should always assume the power tool is plugged in when you pick it up, but still sometimes you get rushed and at the end of the project you try to put everything away, it's plugged in, you grab the handle and there goes the finger, you know. So stick them with the three-quarter inch. And you can see still embarrassed but problem solved. And there we go, two blocks of wood with a hole in it. Not rocket science, but... So here's the final version. Um, only thing I did different was marked forward and up. So when you get there and you're trying to do it at night or you're stressed, you got it figured out. And so as you can see, you could do this with one hand. Slide that one through. Slide this one through. And this nut only needs to be um, finger tight. Like that. And then we're all done. The one change I'm going to make, I, we decided we're going to keep it in the boat and not the truck. Because the boat will always be with this trailer, but we might have a different truck or a tow truck or something moving the boat someday. So thank you for watching, and I hope this helped you. Steve's video out. Cut.